Hallelujah. Amen. We honor the Lord Jesus. We thank him for all. We bless him for his consistency. We bless him for his faithfulness. In the kingdom of God, by prayer, by fasting, we do see result. In the kingdom of God, by coming at his feet, we do see result. He's a right and righteous judge. He's a merciful judge. He's a loving father. And he never fails those who call on him. The purpose of God is way beyond the imagination of man. Take Joseph in the pit, betrayed by his brothers. I am certain, over certain, that Joseph in the pit called on God for deliverance. You see, when the word of God said that God never fails, it means that he does not fail his plan in your life. Because when Joseph called unto the Lord in that pit, he did not receive the answer according in his understanding. So this can be constructed as if God failed, but God did not fail. God had a plan. So when, when, when the, word say, the word of God says it never fails, don't think about that thing that you asked for, you did not receive, then therefore God failed. No, no. He has a plan. And that plan is constructed to fulfill his promise. Joseph in the pit called on God. See my brothers. See my beloved, my family who threw me into the pit. Lord, hear me. And the Lord answered to Joseph, but in a different way. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody hear me. Ah. God answered Joseph. When we pray, the word of God says he hears. When he hears, what happened is that he now put in motions the answers. But all those answers come in the big picture of his full, complete promise and will. He looked at Joseph, but before to see Joseph, he sees who? Abraham. Hallelujah. And he already told to Abraham that something gonna happen. But through that, I'm gonna make myself glorious. So he was speaking to Abraham but he was already saying the salvation of people. What is the difficulty? What is the pain that you believe you have prayed for? And then the answer has not come the way you thought. Thinking that God did not hear you. Say to the devil, say devil, you are a liar. You are a liar. If God is not God, then we are doomed forever. But he is the true God. 
And Atheus said in his heart, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. But indeed, when I see this podium, the person who made it may have died 100 years ago. This does not mean because I did not see him, then therefore this was made by chance. There are roads and buildings which were made thousands of years ago. But it's not because we did not see the person who made it, then therefore it was made by chance. Look at the conceptions of your finger. Of your eyes, of your feet, and then try to convince yourself that God does not exist if you can. Try to tell to yourself, looking at your finger, this one is by chance. You cannot, except you are a fool. Your prayer must be, Lord, every foolish thought, every foolish thought, because when you pray, the devil will tell you, how do you know he will answer? But it's simple. Just look at your finger. Are you what I'm saying? The Bible says, those who come to the Lord must first believe that he is. Hallelujah. And that he is the rewarder of Jesus Christ. Please put your finger before your eyes. And I want you to tell me if you believe that when you see this one, is, is it by chance? Try, try to move your fingers. Why, why are you moving your fingers? Because you heard something that I told you. And what I told you created in you the ability to function those fingers. But the reason why the fingers function is because somebody before me constructed it and then put inside activities that your brain can give in. You know, sometimes we pray and we say, some are in the hospital. Some are the... The reality is that we were supposed to be in the hospital. We were supposed to be in the grave. Hallelujah. Those who were there are not only sinners. Amen? Are you what I'm saying? When Christ died, hallelujah, when Matthew died, when Paul died, when Stephen, who was full of the Holy Ghost, they stoned him and then he died. It was because his time has finished and has arrived. So you look at your finger. You know that you are still existing. And that the God who is, who created you, say your time is not arrived. That's why you're not dead. But if your time has not arrived, then it means you have something to fulfill. Say, my soul, hear the word of God and bend to the will of God. My soul, hear the word of God and bend to the will of God. I was selling to a sister yesterday. I said, sister, you need to learn to speak to your soul. For when you look through the word of God, you will see often time that the Bible talks about my soul, my soul, my soul. Hallelujah. You need to command your soul to obey and then to trust 
and to expect the benefit of God so that your emotions will be right with the will of God so it never fails the Lord never fail the word of God said though I be slain I will shout and praise his name he never fail Joseph he saw the grace of God in his life in a different manner because that grace did not leave him in the pit to die are you following what I'm saying are you, are you following what I'm saying that grace did not leave him in the pit to die I remember when I was in jail I pray that God will give me grace so I will receive my passport because the person who defrauded me kept my passport so I was praying I said Lord please give my passport at least my passport because in that passport I had all my visas so the people in the jail they were saying that I was not legal in the United States so I had to prove that I was legal but I had no document so I told them it's not complicated open the computer and look inside you will find my name you will find my, my visa it's not complicated they answer me they are not working for me they are working against me it is not for them to prove it is for me to prove so I was thinking Lord please give my passport so I started praying and praying and praying listen carefully and as I was pleading God please make a way then the way were even more close and I was praying even the more and one day I wrote a letter to the judge I said judge please grant me at least to recover some of my property that was left to the person so that I can at least have something that identify me because I need to demonstrate I am not illegal I received zero answer and I prayed again but you see while I was praying in faith, knowing that God, that in those days, in those days, I could call heaven, heaven will open because my faith was higher than my nose. There was no doubt that I knew God was hearing me. I, I was not just convinced, but I was in that. Every word I said was coming to pass. So in the boldness of faith, I said, God, grant me my passport. Then we went to the judge. The opponent stood over there. I was over here. The judge was over there. I said, judge, please tell the opponent to just give my passport. The judge asked to the opponent, do you have his passport? The opponent says, no. I said, ah. I said, judge. And the opponent said, no. The day I left, I left with all my property. I said, judge, lie, lie, lie. Don't you see? And the judge told me, if your opponent say he does not have what you have, what you want, it means he does not have what you want. Period. Case closed. <laughs> have you ever been in a situation where you know somebody is lying? Are you following what I'm saying? You know that you know that you know that the person look at you and, and the person lie. You know the person is lying, but the person is lying anyway. 
And then the people believe the person who laughed. But you were praying that God will give you justice. So in your mind, you will start thinking, but where is God? Well, let me tell you something. That day, if I had my passport, the next day, I would have been deported back in Africa. Because immigration was waiting for my passport to ship me like Amazon shipper. They were awaiting. They said, we must take this guy out. And they were waiting just for the passport. And I did not know. And I was praying for my passport. But God knew. I thought it was my property. It belongs to me. But God said, that thing will cause you a hurt. Until I had to come finally to trust God's plan. And I saw the word of God that says, if they take your tunic, <laughs> let go. I said, ah. Finally, I accepted. I said, Lord, I will let go. How do you know God answered me? Because I'm here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I'm here. Because the plans of the enemy. Remember, Paul was in prison. And the enemy was conspiring. They were calculating to kill him the day he's delivered. You follow what I'm saying? Do not stop praying because you have not received as you prayed for. Simply start now asking God, Lord, in that answer, the way you gave or the way you did not give, what is the purpose? From that day, when God makes a shame of your fall, That day you will see everything. Hallelujah. It will be like, you will like be looking at the movie and then you will say, God is faithful. So we know by the grace of God that we are called and then we're going to go in our second part of the word to arise and shine. Huh. Uh. I am called. Tell to yourself, I am called. I am different. I am blessed. I am appointed. I talked to my sister yesterday. I said, Speak to your soul. Tell to your soul to obey the word of God. Command your soul. Obey the word of God. And then I told her. She says she wants to. To be gentle. That she does not have gentleness in her life. And she says she met a man. But that guy. He was a Tugulese. But he was all the time. Sending her. Bible verses that talks about a woman has to be submitted. <laughs> he, 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 she says she finally just was uh, an annoyed, so she blocked him. I said, why? She said, ah, because I know I do not have gentleness. I don't have gentleness. And I said, okay. Sometimes you forget you are Christian. You know why? Because when somebody does you something, at that time, you react. If you remember you were Christian, you will give your other chick. <laughs> Am I right? Because if you remember you are Christian, that you follow Christ at that time, when somebody does something, the Bible says, pray for those who... But when somebody persecutes you, you look at him, you want to slap him. Amen? It's after that you remember. But I told her, instead of remembering after... 
you got to remember before. So you do not fall into the trap. And I told her, this is what you got to do. And I gave her one of the secrets myself I used. I, I used to put in my computer reminder and my phone. Every day, I put inside, don't give up. Trust in God. Don't give up. Trust in God. So every day, my phone and my computer was popping the reminder. Every day. So as I was speaking to her, she said, ah, I'm going to do it. So she put quickly on her phone, every day at 7.20, be gentle. Be gentle. <laughs> yes. This is part of strengthening yourself in the Lord. Because there are certain things you need to change. Somebody tell you that you are, you are angry. But when you yourself, you see what you are putting inside, you say, ah, yeah, this one is true. I need to change. Amen. I need to be gentle. So we are conceived, constructed, so that we arise and we shine. But before to shine, you need to remove the veil. Hallelujah. The Bible says when, uh, who is his name? Moses went to the mountain. The glory of God was upon him, upon his face. But when he came down, what did he do? He put on a veil because of the glory of God. But no, you are supposed to remove the veil. And let the Christ, the glory of God in you shine even brighter because the word of God tells us, let your good deeds be seen. Hallelujah. Let your good deed be seen of man so that they may what? Glorify your father who is in heaven. Let's take the book of uh, Isaiah. Isaiah, give me chapter 59. Verse 16. Isaiah 59, verse 16. And no, no, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Start even from verse... Start from verse 9. So I will build from there. Verse 9. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Therefore is judgment far from us, mm -hmm. neither doth justice overtake us. Mm -hmm. We wait for light. But behold, obscurity. We wait for light. light. But behold, obscurity. obscurity. Continue. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. We, for brightness, but we walk in darkness. Continue. Verse 10. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope for the wall like the blind. And we grope as if we had no eyes. As is we had no eyes. Continue. We stumble at noonday as in the night. Mm -hmm. We are in desolate places as dead men. Hallelujah. Amen. They are making up a case. They're speaking unto God. They said this is the case and the situation of our lives. This is the situation of my job, of my finances, of my health, of my marriage. This is the situation of my church. This is the situation that I am in. I'm expecting to see a breakthrough. And I, all I see is broken down. When I pick up something, it's as if my hand has a hole inside. It goes down. Have you ever grabbed water? 
But let me tell you something. You can grab water. You can grab water and have it in your hand. Amen. Help me over there, please. Let me repeat again. I want to help you understand. You can grab water and hold it in your hand. Am I right? Ow. By solidifying it, by icing it. You know what I'm saying? Isn't ice water? Hallelujah. This idea tells you, or this process tells you, that there are certain things you need to know how to solidify in your own life in order to seize what you're looking for. Let's go back to the word. Please give me back the word. Verse 11 of 59. Isaiah 59 verse 11. Isaiah 59 verse 11. We roar like we roar all like bears and mourn so like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far off from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. In, transg in transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the hard words of falsehood. And judgment is turned away backward, and, justi and justice standeth afar off. But truth is fallen in the street, and, e and equity cannot enter. Verse 15, yeah, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Verse 16, and he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercession. I want you to pause a little here. All the prayer of all the issues, the difficulties, the sins, the transgression, the iniquities, they say we know them. But God says, he looked and saw that there was no man and wondered that there were no intercessor. What does it mean? In your own life to start with, what you need God that you operate in your life, you must intercede for it. Hallelujah. You must intercede for it before somebody join with you and intercede for you and with you. Hallelujah. Let's go back. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Mm -hmm. Therefore, his, his arm brought salvation unto him. And his righteousness, it sustained him. Now, listen, the love of Christ. The purpose, he wants you to arise and shine. Are you following? Say, God, my father wants me to arise and shine. Listen, in the midst of all the catacombs, of all the failure, there, give me back the word, please. There it says, therefore is arm did what? Brought salvation. And his righteousness, it sustained him. Verse 17 says what? For he put on righteousness as a, as a breastplate mm -hmm. and an helmet of salvation upon his head. Do you see now this one? You remember this one? Where? Ephesians 6, amen? Verse from verse 10 and following, right? Amen. Continue. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing mm -hmm. and was clad with zeal as a clock. Mm -hmm. 
according to their deeds, accordingly he will repay. Fury, fury to his adversaries, recom recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will repay recompense. Mm -hmm. Verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west mm. and his glory from the rising of the sun. Mm. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. I want you to, to understand this one. Why, why does the Lord want you to arise and shine? Let's take the context first, which is the people of Israel. The people of Israel, the Lord told him, I want you to follow my ways. I want you to obey me. I want you to remain in my commandments. And he told them, if you do not do so, curse will fall on you. Hallelujah. And indeed, they do not do so. And indeed, curse fell on them. But did the Lord give them up? Let me, let me ask again. Did the Lord give up Israel? The plan that God said he has for you is way well far above your failure. But if you understand that, this will help you get back up. Arise and shine. He says, I look to my people, transgressions, iniquity, sins were completely overtaking them. But I look to the enemy because of my people action, the enemy has stricken them. But what that God says, but I'm rising against the enemy. Instead of rejoicing, over the striking, the striking of, the, of his people, he said, no, that's what they have a mark over their head. Hallelujah. In the book of Revelation, when the seventh angel comes, the Bible says when the thing is released from the bottom hells, those, those creatures, they come and they are given order to kill everyone on earth up to one third of the world. But it says to all those who have what? The mark of God, you shall not touch. How do you have the mark of Christ? Tell me how. How do you know you have the mark of Christ? Uh -huh. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, she remembered that. <laughs> she remembered that. <laughs> Amen. The mark of Christ on your forehead is the word of God in your head. What it means is that the enemy comes to deceive. Hallelujah. The way you defeat the enemy is by using the mark of the word and, hallelujah, by using the word. So when the enemy comes to attack you and you are utilizing the word, I am different. I am a peculiar people. I am called and I am appointed. Because the enemy will say, look at your iniquities. Look at your transgressions. Look at your sins. Look at your failure. Look at how low you have come. But you got to say, Lord, you call me, I am different. I am called. David has to strengthen himself in the Lord so that he can arise again. Do you believe that God takes pleasure into your misery? When he builds you, he saw glory and future. And the enemy came with the mud. 
But you got to pray that let the water of Christ cleanse that mud out of my life. Because he built you for future. He built you so that you shine. When he breathed in you, he breathed in you his spirit, not the spirit of the devil. Amen. Give me back the word, please. Go ahead, verse 19. Verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. Now, the enemy come, remember, because the sins of the people, the transgression of the people, because the Lord already said, when you sin, you're going to have a curse out of it. Amen. But when God makes a covenant with you, even when you are unfaithful, the Bible says what? Let me explain to you how it works. What makes you advance and continue is not the strength you have. Mm -mm. What makes you advance and continue is a recognition of the strength of God that is pushing you. Because in my weakness, then I am strong. To recognize that it is God who's giving me the stamina to advance. If it was for me alone, I would sit down and cry. Are you following? You see, this morning I look at my wife. And I said, baby, you went, I mean, we all went through, but she went through. And losing a child is as if you lost your soul. Because there is nothing else that remains that even gets you any joy. And then she decided to press in the Lord. Remain faithful to God, faithful to her marriage, faithful to her husband, faithful to her children. I look at her, I say, you are a woman of valor. Because I heard many testimonies from many houses where there were pastors, prophets, apostles, women of God, but it was cataclysm and catacomb. You know what I'm saying? There is every reason why the sword will now be dividing your own house. It is your fault. No, no, it's my fault. It is your fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. And I remember the word of God. He who finds a mm -mm, not not a wife. Give me the word. Give me the word. No, a wife. G give me the word. Give me the word. Proverbs chapter what? No, 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 no. Is that 15 or 18 somewhere? H help me. Help me with that. 18. Proverbs 18. Give me that on the screen, please. Give me on the screen, please. Can we read that? Proverbs 18.22 Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. Hold on. Give me that in the Amplify. Give me the Amplify. Hi, Lord Jesus. Say, I am different. I am different. I am called. I am called. I am chosen. I am chosen. I am appointed. I am appointed. 
Uh-huh, read for me. He who finds a true and faithful wife mm. finds a good thing. Ah! He who finds a true and faithful a wife finds a good, good thing. thing. For what? And obtains favor and approval from, from the Lord. And I look at my wife. You know, I used to sing when we met. I didn't know he will favor me this way. I didn't know he will favor me in this way. I didn't know he will favor me in this way. He will favor me in this way. Thank you. I used to sing that to her all the time. But you see, when the word tells you, arise and shine, is in every compartment of your life. Is your business struggling? Remember, you are different. Arise and shine. Hallelujah. Is your marriage struggling? Remember, you are different. Arise and shine. Is your life struggling? Remember, you are different. Arise and shine. Because you are called to be shining. Imagine the Lord Jesus, the third day of resurrection. <laughs> How is it alive? <laughs> oh. Judah! Ah. Where's Judah? <laughs> and then the angels comes. He's dead. Ah, go for him! The Lord deal with him. <laughs> no, just imagine those scenarios. Like in the impossibility of it, that's how impossible you are to do because you are called to arise and shine. The Bible said when the women came, they were looking for the Lord Jesus. They saw an angel sitting on the on the tomb. He said, "Who are you? You looking for?" She said, Jesus. She said, he's not here. Now imagine, without Mary, the Lord Jesus said, who, who are you looking for? Ah, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, I've taken If she would have taken time to listen with the voice, she would have realized that uh, what she was looking for was right there. That's why you should not be crying over your feet. Say, I am different. I am called. I am chosen. I am appointed. When she left and she turned, she realized that she was crying for Aunt Nessa that was already there. Do not let the cloud of adversity Cloud your judgment. Do not let the cloud of adversity cloud your judgment. Please tell to yourself, I am called. I am different. I am chosen. I am appointed. Do, do you believe that? Now, for you to know if you are different, it's simple. I'm going to make a test. The Bible says, if they slap you on the, give the, come here. Let me try it. Come, come, let me try. There you go. Hey, hey, ah, he's different. He's appointed. God bless you. 
Aleluya. Go. <laughs> Amen. You just say you are different, but you are not doing it. <laughs> you just confess you are different. That you are called. That you are appointed. That you are chosen. I say, Come, I will slap you. You say, I. And then you say you believe. <laughs> Hallelujah. You go. You different. Yes. You appointed. Yes. Ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, he come again. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> She's holding a cheek. She's like, Jesus, Jesus, let not your word pass through. <laughs> Amen. God has called you to arise and shine. What is making you clouded? We cloud your purpose. You see, sometimes, as men of God or leader, one of our most important prayer is, Lord, answer your people. It, it makes your heart very contrite and your spirit very burdened. Now, now I understand Moses. Because as a child and an appointed, your prayer becomes that the law we answer is people. But for you to get to the place where you know that God can answer you, you must also know that regardless of the cloud of situations, you can still rise and shine. If your Redeemer leave it, you will also leave. Can somebody look at you and say, ah, this girl, I can trust her. This man, this lady, I can trust him, trust her. Because Christ has to look at you and says, well done. Good and faithful servant, for I am well pleased with you. So refuse to be a remain down. Hallelujah. The prayers that you pray are to make you function so you continue to shine. In my country, we say choco nanchaka. It means kill pleuve or kill neige. Whether it is eh, raining or sunshine. Regardless what will happen, Choco na Chaka, I will rise and shine. When I came, I don't know, I should have probably prepared that, but I did not know God would take me here. But anyway, when I came out of jail, I will show you the picture after. When you look at me, even Jesus on the cross was beauty. <laughs> but I know that God said he will lead me to the place he prepared for me. But when he said that and I look at me, all I saw was a sandal. <laughs> How can you believe God when the contrary is happening in your life? But God does not want you to look at the contrary. He wants you to look at the possibility and the probability and the certainty. The 
adversity against you that was done in your life are now meet for you to sit down and cry over it. Say, I refuse it. I refuse it. I refuse it. I am different. I am called. I am appointed. No. The adversity are not meant for you to sit down and cry. They are meant for you to see the hand of God. Ay, ay, ay. Are you following what I'm saying? He said, for I have reasoned Pharaoh for myself to show my glory. When you pray and you cry, your answer will not be answered. God does not answer your cry. <laughs> he answers your faith. Amen? Please, get up and shine. For it says that even if the enemy comes against you, he, God, will rise and he will put his spirit between you and the enemy. There are times God will allow the liar to lie. Are you what I'm saying? There is a purpose inside. When Joseph was inside the jail, he did good to the butler. Hallelujah. I mean, he's not only good, but he just, I'm going to call it, interpreted the dream. Amen? But for the butler, it was good news. The baker died. The butler did not. He talked to the butler. He said, when you go out, back to your position, please remember me. But you all know it did not happen this way. It did not happen how Joseph thought. He thought that what he did will repay him automatically. No. He stayed there for a good time. Why? Because there was a season and a time that was coming in Egypt where God was about to give a dream to Pharaoh. And that dream nobody can explain but one. If Joseph would have got up earlier and went to the king, the king will say, but you are a jailer. You are an inmate. What do you want me to do with you? You have no value. Sometimes, for you to break through, you have to go some through mud. Let me explain that. When you look for gold, is there gold on the on the on the on the on the surface of the of, of the of, of the of the of the ground? Is where, eh? Deep down. When you finally find that gold, is the gold shiny? Is covered of what? Mud, dirt. But is it because there is mud and dirt on that gold that it is not gold? But when you see the gold covered with dirt, but you understand it is gold, even dirt you don't see. You know what I'm saying? You know that this is gold. Regardless of the dirt, that one, I call it gold. I will wash it. Hallelujah. So sometimes, some mud and dirt that comes your way are to cause you to break through. Say, I am different. I am called. I am chosen. And I am appointed. The God that God has deposited in your life is for you to shine. So he saw told Moses, he said, stop crying. Get up. There is another destination I want you to get in. Why? Because the enemy is after you. If you don't get back up, the enemy will have reason of you. Uh -uh. Let me give you a picture. If you have read the book of her, is that Second Samuel, where Adonijah has taken over 
the kingdom. He has stolen the kingdom from uh, Solomon. Hallelujah. The Bible said they were feasting. Take that picture just as in the picture of Christ. The devil and Herod and all the clique, the Pharisee and all of them. When they heard that finally the Lord Jesus was crucified. The Bible may not have said it, but I am certain they rejoiced. You know what I'm saying? Now imagine them. They finally thought this one was over. Because they were attempting by any means to get rid of him. Finally, somebody came from his camp to give them the road and the map. So they were glad they killed him. And imagine them sitting around. Oh, we have finished with him. Oh, hmm. He thought he was uh, the son of God. <laughs> we show him Kuler. You know Kuler? <laughs> you don't know. On la montre de couleur. It's a way of saying that. How is it that? In English. Uh -huh. They show him the true color. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend. The day you meet the person. Hmm. Oh, my chérie. Quand je regarde tes yeux, je veux les voir verts. Tu as que la neige qui tombe en plein soleil. <laughs> Alléluia. Oh, tu me fais trembler le cœur. <laughs> Quand je t'entends pas, mon cœur fait dougou dougou. <laughs> In English, it means that the day you see the one you want to marry or you want to have, all the word of heaven from Solomon come in your mouth. <laughs> song of Solomon, song of songs, song of David, song of Elijah, song of Samuel, all the song of Moses come in your mouth. But then, it comes a day where the enemy comes like a flood. Mm-hmm. It will always come a day when the enemy comes like a flood. By that day, what would you do? Hallelujah. He will pray and put on the armor of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You see, when Christ conceive the thought about you to say, okay, I want you to go and to become, for he called you to be a human being. So to become what I want you to be is because before to call you to be what he wants you to become, he already made you be before to call you. Do you understand that? For the word of God says that uh, he goes in the hand Fulfill everything and comes in the beginning and says, start. So God has already arranged your end. He already gave you an expected end. So when the enemy comes like a flood, your job is to arise and say my job is to arise and shine. My job is to arise and shine. Chacun a son job description. Each one of us has his job description. The devil is to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. Our job is to arise and shine. Because we are called and we are different and we are chosen and we are appointed. If where God has appointed you, you are not found, can the work continue? No. You have to be found where God has appointed you. 
But for you to be found there, you must refuse to be clouded by the cloud of adversity. You must refuse. I'm reading something over there. It says, let your faith be bigger than your fear. What are you afraid of? What is scaring you? You know, hey man, that boy, that boy is in the anointing. He said, I'm afraid of nothing. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you are called to arise and to shine. Remember this. No gold that is found under the ground is thrown away because there was dirt on it. Hallelujah. No gold that is found under the ground is thrown away because there is dirt on it. You must process it. Without processing, there is no value. Tell to yourself, without processing, I have no value. God, we have to process you. Huh. God, we have to process you so that your value comes out. Because you are meant to shine. You are not meant to remain under the ground. But you must go to processing. When the day of processing arrives, your mind should remind you, I am different. I am called. I am chosen. And I am appointed. I am different. I am called. I am chosen. And I am appointed. By the word of God that remains in your mind, the business of your mind will not give room to the activity of the thought of the enemy. It comes sometimes that I can be facing challenges. And when I face them, and I see they start taking my mind thought. Right there, I do two things. The first one is I pray in tongues automatically. Like I, I cloud the thought of the enemy with the power of God, like automatically. And then right after when I finish, I don't even remember the problem. Like literally. I just don't remember the problem. That's why the Bible talks about the power of tongues. Because it is given for you to build up. It is a tool that is so powerful that, you know, you need to have it and utilize it. First thing first, when there is adversity, a breaking tongue. And right there, the thought that the enemy is shooting like an arrow, I just... Now I'm busy with God. I'm busy with the mystery of God. So the enemy has no room now. But after that, when I come out, I'm processed and I shine like gold. And I am convinced that my step will bring me to destination because Christ is working with me. If not, I will sit down. Hey, Jesus. I don't know. Hey, you say I will not be at the, at the tail. But I'm still holding the tail of uh, the cochon. Huh? I don't know. You say I will not be at the tail. But when I go to Sam's club, I'm still at the tail. I don't know. So you start complaining, complaining, complaining. Meanwhile, the enemy, is what, what is he doing? He's feasting. He's literally, remember, they were feasting because Adonijah stole the reign of Solomon. 
But you see, <laughs> I was driving with my wife, and then we went to the, the stop, and I saw something that says, no U-turn. And my wife said, ah, there, there was a guy who was giving a, a story. He says, he went, and at the U-turn, he went, and he did a W. <laughs> so when the police come, you will say, I did not do a U-turn. I did a W-turn. So you cannot arrest me for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. My point is that there are situations where you find yourself in. All you have to do is to put on your gear to say, I'm going to change the lane. Because this lane is busy with the big tracks. It's not advancing. Why should I allow myself to be drained with those who want to stay back? Why? The Lord Jesus Christ, in the book of John chapter 6, there were some disciples who do not want to work with him. What did he say? What did he say? He said, go. Are you what I'm saying? Because God has appointed you. Those who cannot work with you are not set for the time in which and the lane in which you are called for. So the first lane and the first pace cannot get everybody in that. Some people, they like sloth. Is that, is that sloth? Sometimes I tell to my son, I say, work fast. And he's like, <laughs> 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 I don't understand this boy. What I say? Hey, hurry up! <laughs> Hallelujah. So I have to tell him, run! And then. <laughs> <laughs> so I did not know which word I had to say to make him go on the first place. <laughs> Finally, I said, I will spank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you have to refuse to remain stuck because somebody is uh, hiding or hindering you. You are called to arise and shine. Gold, again, does not depreciate its value because there is mud on it. In my country, somebody who has been in jail is not only a shame, but is a disgrace and like a curse. If in your family, uh, uh, where is your uh, where is your son <laughs> in jail? <laughs> ah, Jesus, <laughs> like it's a disgrace and a shame. But today, like the Bible says, I can boast about it because I can. I have been in jail. What, what where have you been? <laughs> I've seen jail. <laughs> oh yeah, I have seen jail. I know how we eat in jail. Ah. <laughs> That's when you know. The victory has become yours because your trial has become your triumph. The same cross of the shame because the same cross of glory. Today we boast about the cross of Christ, but yesterday it was a shame and a curse. Why do you accept to sit down and let the enemy laugh at you? Listen, there are people who literally, they enjoy seeing you suffer. Do you understand that? There are people, like, they're not even people, they are demons. <laughs> like, they enjoy seeing you suffer. Their heart has departed from compassion. And when they hear, hey, the sister, she has fallen. Praise the Lord, oh, praise the Lord. Oh. There are people who enjoy to see you suffer. 
The way you have to pay back to them is to arise and shine. You know, sometimes when you go, if you do business, you go to a certain place and then you want to talk with somebody. And the person will tell you, how much do you do per year? You look at your business, you, dash, you just started it. So you don't do anything per year because you started it. So when they give the range, they will say zero to 1,000, above 1,000, from 20 to 5 million. When you coach yourself, you put zero to 1,000 because you just started. You know what I'm saying? But that answer that comes to the person will tell him that you are not qualified for him to speak to you. However, when you know the value of what you're doing, hallelujah, you will not take it as a no. You will only think in your mind that today I did not have the 20,000, but when I have the 50,000, I will come back and I will check again. This time when I check again, he will receive me. And I will tell him, yesterday I came. I was under 1,000. You did not want me. Today I am 5 million. I don't want you. <laughs> now he's not rising the stake. He said, no, 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 no. Stay. I will give you more. And rising. See. If you understand those little principles, you will advance even further. The stone that the builder rejected. He, do you understand that? Like, the stone that the builder said, this one is not worth. This one, we don't need it. This one, I don't want it. That stone became the chief corner stone. Meaning that stone became what held the entire building. If they knew that that stone has purpose and importance, they wouldn't have rejected it. But they could not see beyond the limitation of the dirt over the gold. But the gold remained gold regardless of what it is. The more you go through the processing, the more pure, the more shining you become. Gold, I always say, does not become ashes because there is too much fire. Amen? Gold never become ashes because there is too much furnace. There is a book that is called the book of Seed, which is a Catholic book. That book, one time I read it, and there was one verse inside. I was about 10 years old or 11. And that verse, to this day, struck me. It says, my son... If you pretend serve the Lord, prepare your heart for trial. For as the gold is tried in the furnace, so shall ye be tried in the furnace. When I read that verse, I was 10 or 11. I did not forget that verse. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I remember in those days, I wanted to serve God, but I do not understand what serving God is. But yes, I did go through the furnace of the trial. And when I went through, it was not, I would say that, it was not joyful. But I came across the word of God that says, count it for all joy. Hallelujah. Count it all joy. Those fiery trials that have befallen you. Ah, ah, ah. Give me that verse. How do you count it for joy? Is the trial something it is joyful? How do you count it? I will explain to you. Give me the verse. Put on the screen for us, please. Can you read, please? Go ahead. James chapter 1, verse 2. Mm -hmm. My brethren. My brethren. My brethren. Uh -huh. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. When? When he fall into diverse temptations. The word temptation here is for trials. Give me that in a what? Amplify. Mm -hmm. Amplified. 
Consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials. How, how, how can you consider a trial as a reason of joy? You see what I'm saying? You know, it is easy to say that. But when it's there, <laughs> she, she say, because I'm a, 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 in my witness, I'm strong. I say, yeah, it's easy to say that. When you are there, uh, you say, Jesus, <laughs> am I still alive? <laughs> um, I will give you an example because that's what I lived. When we lost a raya, I remember I prayed like I, 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 had, I had the kind of faith I did not even know I had. From the first time in my life, I pray for resurrection. And then nothing happened. I say, uh, I pray. You know, sometimes you pray and then and, 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 and you close your eyes. <laughs> I see, like, and the more you close your eyes, like, and, 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 and then the answer comes out. <laughs> I pray, nothing happened. Heartfelt prayer. And my wife and I, we were driving and we call the, I would call that place where they keep the body, the mortuary. We call the guy, we say, we need to come to see the daughter. He said, ah. I said, yeah, we need. But he did not know. We were going to pray again. Put it this way. Normally, when you see a situation where there is no hope, you just have to see that you cry. Instead of sitting and crying, we even press the more. It's after I understood, but in the time, I could not get it. Then the Lord spoke to me and he said, huh, this one, he said, Ariah was like a seed that has fell in ground. And you are the fruit of it. And then I say, ow. He said, you see, there were things in your life that you were asking for. Specifically, the prayer of faith. To see the red. The, I see the red. Um, the resurrection. But for that to come in your life. He went through this. And now you have had the boldness to pray for it. When he told me that, suddenly peace entered my soul. And then any time, sometimes I sit down and I count my children and I say one is missing. And then suddenly my mind goes back. I start praying in tongues. And I said, Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. That, this is my main phrase. Your child is no more living. How can you say thank you for your faithfulness? You feel what I'm saying? Because here the thank you for your faithfulness will be, God has resurrected her or God has kept her alive. But then he taught me. That his faithfulness does not depend upon the answer that you receive, but upon his goodness, upon his unfaithfulness. The faithfulness of God depends upon him. It is built upon him. So the answer that you do not have does not stop him to be and become and remain faithful. Then I started counting it as subject of joy. How? Well, give me back the gems, please. Count 
consider it nothing but joy. My brothers and my sisters, whenever you fall into various trials. Now, gig, back, back the next one. I will tell you why. Go ahead, be. Be assured. Be assured. Be assured. That what? The testing. That, that. The testing of your faith. Hold on a second. I am a child of God. I am born again. I am filled of the Holy Ghost. But you have no test. You are a sounding brass. You feel what I'm saying? I am victorious. I am strong. I am firm. But you have no test. It is a sounding brass. A lady told, she sent me a message. She said, I thought you would have quit ministry. I said, hey. <laughs> I said, in fact, he gave me the stamina even to beat up the devil. In fact, he gave me even the rage to beat up the devil. A rising He gave me the strength to even press further. Because the word of God told me prior to the trial that be assured that the testing of your faith yeah, two, faith that you can take things from but faith that you use to please God. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. So you are to see in the void, you are to see the plentiness of God. And you have to have faith. It means certainty and assurance that this God will make it happen. The children of Israel, Abednego, Meshach, and Sadrash. The Bible says, when they were brought into the furnace, King Nebuchadnezzar told them, all you have to do is to pound down. And then your case is solved. They said, King, even if God does not save us, we will not bow down. So are you going to praise God because he saved you? Only? Are you going to praise God only because he worked out the way you were expected? But you're going to arise and shine because your destiny is not here. Say so my destiny is not here. Say, my destiny is not here. I am called. I am different. I am chosen. I am appointed. And you are appointed there. I must continue. Give me back that verse. James. Uh -huh. be, be assured. Be assured that the testing of your faith. That the testing of your faith through experience. Through experience produces endurance. Produces what? Endurance. Produces endurance. endurance. Some of you you fall easy not because you don't love God, but because you have not been traveled yet processed. Because the endurance that you have to have in the, give me in English, in the course of faith, in the race of faith, the Bible says oftentimes comes through the testing of your faith. But when it comes, count it all joy. How do you count it all joy? Because you remember that your God is faithful. For Lord, 
regardless what would happen, I will trust in you. And now God is now taking all things to make them work together to those who are called according his purpose. Hallelujah. Who love God and call according his purpose. You may not be dancing as you see the trial, but prepare your step for dancing because you must dance. Are you what I'm saying? The heaviness of your spirit must go by praise. Are you what I'm saying? For put on the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness because I am different I am called I am chosen and I am appointed I have only one choice is to arise and shine do you have that certainty the Bible says be assured be assured Hallelujah. Be a shirt. Give me back the verse, please. Let's finish. Be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance, uh -huh. leading to spiritual maturity. Leading to spiritual maturity. Hallelujah. Amen. The problem is that the Christian wants to become spiritual matches without trial. <laughs> he ain't going to work this way. Hallelujah. Lord, give him more revelation. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to have revelation. You will go through trial of processing. God has to process you one way or another. He says... He will not give unto you anything. He will not allow in your life. Listen. He will not allow in your life anything that is too complicated to handle. For me, if I go to the, I would call those things, the gym. When I enter in, when I say when I go, if I go, it's because I went probably three times in my life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, when I enter in, I see the bodybuilder. You should, you should have been here on, uh, on Friday. We were doing uh, the dance. <laughs> Hallelujah. You were not here. We, I see the bodybuilder. Some of them like this. I go, I look for the one who do like that. <laughs> <laughs> because each one has his burden. Are you know what I'm saying? I cannot see the guy. Because when you yourself you see the you, you see the weight of it, you know that's not your territory. Am I right? You may think that you can. Your mind and your back will not agree. When you do that. <laughs> <laughs> because your eyes will tell you what your back will support. So you will know with certainty that whatever God has allowed in my life, because I trust him. If you do not trust God or you do not know God, that's something else. But when you know him, when you seek him, he allows the testing of your faith the Bible said, then count it for joy because it's going to produce in you maturity. You know, there is no mango that is good if it's not mature. When you take the mango that is not good, that is not comes out, ripe, and you eat, it is what? Sour. Something. It burns, even your teeth. It burns your teeth. But when the mango is mature, and he's ripe. you like. So your spiritual maturity will make you sweet in the life of people. 
Somebody will come to you, he will look at you. You will say, ah, oh, when I see you, I see God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because, because you are called to a rising, and then they will see your good deed and your light, and then we praise God, your Father. So why do you fret? Why do you fret? Is there something too complicated for God? So if he did not allow, it's not because it's complicated, it's because there is better. Hallelujah. Let me finish that verse. Uh-huh. Be assured. Be assured mm -hmm. that the testing of your faith through experience mm -hmm. produces endurance mm -hmm. leading to spiritual maturity mm -hmm. and inner peace. And inner peace. Amen. There are, there are, there, you know, Shakir, each one of us is built and wired differently. So I can endo like 10 kilograms of uh, trial. You can endo 5 kilograms. Somebody can endo 100 kilograms. But each one is wired different. Are you know what I'm saying? After you have went through and you have trusted God, the Bible say you will have inner peace. Because by that time, <laughs> let me let me explain you how it works. When you see a guy coming towards you, and you know you are a karate man, master in karate, taekwondo, mélangé avec uh, aikiri, and the kung fu. And then you have practiced all the art. And you see a guy coming. I will, I will, I will slap you. I will beat you. You like, <laughs> you are at peace. You look at that guy. You are at peace because you know that all this cannot do nothing for you. Cannot do nothing against you. So your peace is because you are certain that you have matured into the arts. Are you what I'm saying? That you have developed the arts. So the guy jump, 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 jump. You like that. And then some of them, that that is it's basically ladies. <laughs> ladies are like, if you are a garçon, faut me toucher, faut me toucher, il faut me taper, je m'en fous. They say. I don't care. Beat me if you want to kill me. I don't care because they are angry against the boy. And now they got me. Touch me, touch me. He haven't even touched you. <laughs> Somebody say that uh, some some women their mouth only <laughs> can tear down the entire world. <laughs> so. You are at peace because you know that your strength and your maturity in what you have developed is better and greater than the map that you're looking at. So there are certain trials. Uh, there is one trial. When God, when God processes you through, everything that comes after becomes like water. you like, if, you know, some people that went to the war of Vietnam, after they came alive and they saw a riot, <laughs> they're like, that's nothing. When you have been a war survivor and you see the little demon, the little, little demons, they come before you, they, 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 they dance like, hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. You like keep dancing because you are no more under everything that scares you. You have inner peace. If you understand that, you remain in peace. Yesterday, I always say when you were broke and you have no money even to buy your own food. How can you forget? You know, when I, mean, I, I was in Africa, I have an uncle who was in France. Now I understand. Because when I was there, 
I thought it was a uh, ripping money out of uh, a three. <laughs> For real. I sent him a message. He doesn't respond. He says he's busy. You are always busy. Because you saw my message, you did not respond. You are not busy. You don't want to respond. Send me money. And then, I never understood why is my uncle not responding to my money request? Mm. I will go to the, the how we call it? In, the, in those days, there was, we call it a Sibet Cafe. Um, huh? Call box. Cyber internet cafe places. Because in those days, you do not have computer for yourself. So you go in a the, in the room where there is computers and you pay to have access to the computer and have internet. So I will go there. My last 200 friends here that I had, I will go to make a call. Hello, tonton? Ton, tonton? Do you hear me? Tonton, tu m'entends? And then he's, like, he's over there. Hello? 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 Hey, tonton, tu m'entends? <laughs> because the hello, 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 you do, uh, the money is counting. You, you go, hello, tonton? Tonton, tu m'entends? Ton, tonton? <laughs> I remember those days. How can you forget what God did? How can you forget where God took you from? Why are you scared or fretting before the trial that you see? When you did not have nothing to eat, God kept you with substance. He provided you and provided to you. So why are you thinking that this will overshadow you? You got to tell to yourself, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. For whatever trial that ever come your way, the word of God says, count it for all joy. For be assured that after your faith has been tried, you will spiritually mature. And you will have inner peace. The reason why you need peace is to build. Are you Hallelujah. You need peace to build. You don't build in war. So you need peace. You want to see your future change? Call for the peace of Christ. You want to see things change in your life? Call for the peace of Christ. That's what you need. Peace. And remember, you got to speak to your soul. I am different. I am called. I am chosen. And I am appointed to arise and shine.